Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we're going to talk about setting up hardware keys for two-factor authentication with your Google account. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the controversy surrounding this. Um, do you require apps and things like this? And um, this is, of course, is, is a hotly debated issue that, that we're talking about. Um, I just watched um, one of the latest Rob Braxton videos, which he does, does an amazing job of sorting out what really is behind this. They're trying to tie the accounts to you by the hardware in your device. And that is so absolutely true. As for now, at the time I'm recording this video in late 2021, you can still get around not tying a device onto your Google account. Now, what he does is he carries a separate um, Google device which has Google authentication on it for the purpose of getting into some of his accounts, but it's in a, a phone number that nobody else knows about. Um, I still have never attached a phone number to my fully participating YouTube partner program account. Okay. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about that and why I know you don't actually need that, but there are some caveats because as I've always said, being private is a little inconvenient and that's okay. Sometimes the inconvenience make things a little bit better for ourselves. So first, let's go ahead and talk about the YubiKeys. We'll talk about um, how to set them up, basically, and what their support is. Because first and foremost, I'm going to tell you this. Don't use your phone for anything other than basic communication. Stop using it for your banks. Stop using it for your Google accounts. FYI, if you're on the road or something, you can still watch YouTube without logging in. Just a thought. Just a thought. Um, so... The first step of your privacy focus is that you only are ever going to use YouTube or other Google accounts on your main computer. Now, in my case, I do a lot of OPSEC with multiple different browsers. So I have a browser dedicated to Google that always stays logged in because it's a YouTube computer. I don't need it to do private tabs and all the other things. If you're just simply logging in quickly from somewhere, you want to do it with private tabs. You don't want to save any cookies or login data. Okay, this is all important to make sure that Google can't track you around the internet. Also, the fact that I use different browsers for doing search things on those computers versus actually logging into YouTube, that actually helps protect me because they're not following me around the internet because I only use those uh, the logged in browser for YouTube purposes and I use other browsers for everything else. But that being said, let's talk about the hardware keys. So what I actually have are just your standard FIDO UT, uh, U2F security keys. And uh, these guys here, sorry, I can't get a good focus in on that guy there. Um, very simple keys. They have a, just plug it on in, and then this guy here is a button. So you plug it in, push this button, and it will verify your account. Now, I do recommend you're going to have at least two of them. The reason is you can put multiple different keys into your account. You don't want to run to a case where you are losing your key and then you can't get into your account. So I keep one of these locked up in a safe and I keep one of these accessible around me. So that way I can verify into accounts with 2FA. And then if I happen to lose that one, I have my backup in a safe. I can get that. I can still access all my accounts. And then if you something happens that first key, you absolutely get your second one ordered. Okay. Now what we're going to do here is the first step is I'm going to walk you through your Google account and how to, um, how to get into, uh, adding your security keys. So I've logged into the Google account I'm going to use and I've logged into it with a, uh, this is one of my auxiliary Google accounts that is not used for much. And uh, I've realized I did not actually add either of the hardware keys to it. Um, and so I went ahead and added one of them just to remember the process off the top so I can show you guys. And unfortunately, it looks like the way I have my uh, my cool uh, banner here is not going to work. So let me just give you the whole desktop view uh, because we need to go up to this upper corner. So once you're logged into your Google account, you're going to pull this guy uh, down and you're going to hit your manage your Google account. Okay, this is going to give you information in here, and then you want to go over under security, my apologies, 
go under your security tab, and then now we see we have a new sign-in on Linux. We have a security key added. We have new sign-in with two-step verification was turned on. And um, you can see that my two-step verification is enabled, and this is enabled with a key. It is not enabled with a phone number. You can notice recovery phone number. Oh, there's no number there. Hey, and here's your devices. Here's a Linux is, that's this device. It is currently verified. This is the Android, which I was doing for testing, and we're gonna talk a little bit about Android later on. Here is some other things, password managers, whatever else. So what we are going to do is we're going to hit the button for um, two-step verification. It's going to want you to enter your password again and enter my password. Once it has uh, authenticated it, now it wants to verify me. Wants to authenticate using a registered security key once you can connect a key or cancel it now. So now I'm going to add the key that I have in here. Hit the button. That's all I need to do. Hey, they have verified me. Now I can get into my security keys. So you can see that now that I'm in my two-step verification, I have my security key. I can add my second key. So with my second key here, I'm just going to go ahead and grab that one ready. Hit the next button. It tells you to insert the key. Push the button. It's going to verify. Now I need to give it a name. So this one, I have these labeled on the package and on the key itself. I have them labeled so I know which key is which. So now it is on. Now you can see that I have two UB keys into my Google account. And every time I want to get logged into the device, it's going to ask me for one of these keys. And I usually keep one with me and I keep two in my safe. And so that way we can go ahead and... Um, we can uh, we can get in here and, and just have a look at, at our Google account. So now this is how you can add two-factor authentication without giving Google any information or anything else like this. Device IDs, which Rob Braxton is completely right. Google wants to get these IDs, and these keys will make it better for you to maintain your privacy. But let's talk briefly about Android, because this is um, certainly an issue that, that we need to uh, be concerned about. And so if you head on over to YubiKey's website, they do have some support on Android. So you can see these are the brands of keys that they have. Just hover over these guys and you'll be able to see what they happen to be. And then this is the only one that's completely incompatible. So these are the ones we have there. They are compatible. Now, there are some caveats to this. And this is what Rob Braxton's talking about in that video, where if you're doing the U2F key, which is what these are, it requires you to use the Google Authentication app. That is problematic. <laughs> and so um, one thing I would like to do in the future is I want to get a few more of these. I want to see if I can do the OTP versions of keys and see if I can get those working with the Google login. As of the time I'm recording this video, you cannot go into Android that I have found and use these keys with, of course, a USB-C adapter uh, to get logged in. So it does want you to require this. Now, why on my security settings did it tell me that I was verified in? Because since I've never given Google a phone number on the account, it defaults on the Android device to request a verification in my email. And it still does that. In fact, if I added a secondary email, it would consider that also a security measure and it would send the uh, verification code to that secondary email. So on an Android device, you do not still have to log in, but in order to use these security keys, you do need to install the Google Authenticator app. Now, here's the uh, the next page here. They're saying that uh, these are not supported natively. Uh, HMAC, SHA1, uh, PIV, or OpenPGP. But notice the OpenPGP, um, you have the Open Keychain app, which is available. And it's actually available on F-Droid as well. So I've looked at uh, what you can do with that. And if you open up that application, this will allow you to use the keys with a variety of other applications, mostly email and other PGP 
uh, verified items. So you can get a little bit more uh, support. So Android apps can add support for the following YubiKey features over USB and NFC. Uh, OTP, which requires the OTP stack password or OAuth. And this is why I want to check if I can use these on an Android phone. That is what I would like to check next. As of now, I cannot sign into my Google account with the YubiKeys on an Android device. But here is going back in, looping into the first part I said, don't use your Android device on YouTube. Use something else. Okay. Use a computer, maybe get a small laptop, something portable, something that you don't need to, because you don't have to be signed into YouTube to watch YouTube. Sure. If you want to leave comments, whatever else that is okay. But the fact of the matter is it is more secure for you and more private for you to log into YouTube on an individual computer. That is why that is all I'm using over here is to log in with the individual computers. So with that being said, hopefully this will help you get set up with two-factor authentication on Google. Again, head on over to um, head on over to Amazon or wherever else. Buy yourself at least two of these. I'm going to go ahead and put an Amazon link in the description there. That will be an affiliate link. So if you'd like to help support the channel, clicking that link um, will actually help support the channel. It won't cost you anything else, but I'll go ahead and make the link uh, easy to, to access down there so you can see those different keys. So anyway, thanks for watching, guys, and hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.